let me ask the kind of political sounding question, which is how people usually phrase it. Did Anthony Fauci uh, fund gain of function research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology? So it depends. I mean, I, I've obviously been very closely monitoring this. I've spoken a lot about it. I've I've written about it. And it depends on, I mean, not to quote Bill Clinton, but to quote Bill Clinton, it depends on what the definition of is is. Yeah. And so um, if you use a common sense definition of gain of function, and by gain of function, I, there are lots of things like gene therapies that are gain of function, but what, here what we mean is gain of function for uh, uh, pathogens able, potentially able to create um, human uh, pandemics. Um, but if you use the kind of common sense language, uh, well, then he probably did. If you use the technical language from a 2017 NIH document, uh, and you read that language very narrowly, I think you can make a credible argument that he that he did not. There's a question though, and and uh, Francis Collins talked about that in his in his interview with you. But then there's a question that we know uh, from now that we have the information of the reports submitted by EcoHealth Alliance. Um, to the uh, the NIH, and, and some of which were late or not even uh, delivered, that some of this research was done on MERS, Middle Eastern uh, Respiratory Syndrome um, virus. And if that was the case, um, there is, a, I think, a colorable argument that that would um, be considered gain-of-function research, even by the narrow language of that 2017 document. But I, but I, I definitely think and I've said this repeatedly, that Rand Paul can be right and Tony Fauci can be right. And the question is, um, what? how are we defining gain of function? And that's why I've always said the question in my mind isn't, was it or wasn't it gain of function as if that's like a binary thing, if, if not um, great and if yes, guilty. The question is just what work was being done at the Wuhan Institute of Virology? What um, role if any, did U.S. Uh, government funding play in supporting that uh, that work? And what rights do we all have as, as 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 human beings and as American citizens and taxpayers to get all of the relevant information about that? So let's try to kind of dissect this. So who frustrates you more, Rand Paul or Anthony Fauci's discussion or the discussion itself? So for example, gain of function it is a term that's kind of more used uh, just to mean making, uh, playing with viruses in the lab to try to develop more dangerous viruses. Is this uh, kind of research um, a good idea? Is it also a good idea for us to talk about it in public in the political way that it's been talked about? Is it okay that um, U.S. may have funded gain-of-function research elsewhere? I mean, it's kind of assumed, uh, just like with Bill Clinton, there was very little discussion of, uh, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know whether it's okay for a president, male or female, to have extramarital sex, okay? Or is it okay for a president to have uh, extramarital sex with people on their on his staff or her staff, it was more the discussion of lying. I think it was did you did you lie about having sex or not? And in this gain of function discussion, what frustrates me personally is there's not a deep philosophical discussion about whether we should be doing this kind of research and what kinds like. What are the ethical lines? Research on animals at all? Those are fascinating questions. Instead, it's a gotcha thing. Did you or did you not fund research on gain of function? And did you fund, it's almost like a bioweapon. Did you give money to China to develop this bioweapon that now attacked the rest of the world? Yeah. So, I mean, all, all, all those things are pretty frustrating, but is there a um, thing, the thing you can untangle about Anthony Fauci and gain of function research in the United States and Eco Health Alliance and Wuhan Institute of Virology that's kind of, um, that's clarifying. Uh, what were yeah. the mistakes made? Sure, so 
on gain of function, there actually has been a lot of uh, of debate. And I mentioned before in 2011, these first papers, uh, there was a big debate. Uh, Mark Lipsitch, who's formerly at Harvard, now with the the, the U.S. government, uh, working in the president's office, um, he led a thing called the Cambridge Group uh, that was highly critical of of this work, but basically saying we're we're uh, we're creating monsters. They had the funding pause in 2014. Uh, they spent three years putting together a framework, uh, and then they they lifted it in 2017. So we had a thoughtful conversation. Unfortunately, it didn't work, and I think that's where where uh, where we are now. So I absolutely think um, that there are real issues with uh, the relationship between the United States government and EcoHealth Alliance, and through that, the EcoHealth Alliance with the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And one issue is just essential transparency, because as I see it, it's most likely the case that we transferred a lot of our knowledge and plans and things to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And, and again, I'm sure that Xu Zheng Li is not herself a monster. I'm, I'm sure of that, even though I've never met her. Um, but there are just a different set of pressures on people working in an authoritarian system than people who are working in other systems. That doesn't mean it's entirely entirely different. And so I absolutely think that we shouldn't give $1 um, to an organization, and certainly a virology institute, where we don't have full access to, to their records, to their databases. We don't know what work is, is, is happening there. And I think that we need to have um, that kind of full examination. And that's why, so I understand what what Dr. Fauci is doing is saying, hey, what I hear, Dr. Fauci is saying, what I hear from you, Rand Paul, is you're accusing me of starting this pandemic and you're using gain of function as a proxy for that. And we have, in when there are Senate hearings, every senator gets five minutes. And the name of the game is to translate your five minutes into a clip that's going to run on the news. And so I get that it's there is dark, that dark kind of game. gotcha. Um, but I also think that uh, the Dr. Fauci and uh, the NIA, the National Institute of, of Allergy and Infectious Diseases and the NIH should have been more transparent. Um, because I, th I, I think that in this day and age where there are a lot of people poking around in this whole story of COVID origins, uh, we would not be where we are if it wasn't for a relatively small number of people. And, and, and I'm, I'm part of, there are two, as I know, two groups. One is these internet sleuths known as Drastic, and a number of them are part of a group um, that I'm part of called, it's, it's not our official name, but called the Paris Group. It's about two dozen experts um, uh, around the world, but centered around some, some very um, high-level French academics. So we've all been digging uh, and meeting with each other regularly since, uh, since last year. And our governments across the board, certainly China, but including the United States, haven't been as transparent as they, uh, as they, they need to be. So there's definitely mistakes were made on all sides. And that's why for me from day one, I've been calling for a comprehensive investigation into this issue that certainly obviously looks at China, but we have to look at ourselves. We did not get this right.